Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. I'm Sally Bodet, live from Johannesburg. Your top stories of this evening. A day of protests and a visit from the Northwest MEC over a photograph that shows black and white pupils separated in class. But the SGB says they have other pictures that prove the school is integrated. Three Joburg Metro cops arrested in front of their colleagues after a sting operation in the city. Exe, Exe, we all must vote. Thank you. Ahead of this year's national elections, the IEC unveils an innovative poll slogan, Exe. <laughs> Racism in 2019. Or is it? Education authorities have decided to investigate whether racial segregation is part of school life at Schweizer Rienica Primary School. A photo showing kids sitting in separate racial groups had protesters at the school gates today. But the school claims the photo is a one-off. Govan Whittles has more. <laughs> Pandemonium at Schweizerenica Primary. All of this caused by a single picture. It's enough to warrant a full investigation by the Northwest government. It seems there are a lot of cases here of racism. That is why I've promised the community that I'm coming back next week for two days. And also I will send the team to do investigation in all schools in Mamusa. Primary, secondary, to deal with issue of racism in totality. The school's governing body says the school is not racist and the children are happily integrated, and they have produced these pictures to prove it. Grade R teacher Ilana Barkhazen has been suspended. The SGB says they don't know what she was thinking. No, I don't know. That will, that will come out in the investigation that's going to be conducted from next week, and we'll, we'll learn from there. From the, perhaps it could be a language issue. Perhaps those kids are not speaking Afrikaans, uh, maybe speaking Tswana or English, and the other small kids are just speaking Afrikaans. Despite the school claiming this was simply a one-off, others say racism is alive and well in Schweizerenica in 2019. We have raised this issue of increasing black learners in these two schools, but we had a challenge of confrontation with the whites in the very same schools. That alone is racism, and we are not accepting it. Parents, literally up in arms over the protest, pulled their children out of school today. The MEC has warned that the principal may be next to face suspension. A full investigation at the school will begin on Monday. That probe will have to decide if this photo, which caused the outcry, was simply an unfortunate one-off or the tip of an iceberg at a school stuck in the past. Govan Whittles, Schweizerenica. The South African Police Service has dismissed its head of basic police development, Major General Sandra Malebe Tima. She was found guilty of racism last month. The case stems from a 2016 incident where she made racist and humiliating remarks towards training personnel. Malebe Tima is reported to have said there were too many white people occupying positions in training and the so-called discrimination against black students should be stopped. Johannesburg Metro cops arrested three of their own this morning for allegedly soliciting bribes from a foreign national. The officers, who've been in the department for years, were arrested in front of their colleagues. Mobile Madlala was there. The walk of shame. These three JMPD officers being arrested by their own colleagues and taken to a local police station. Three corrupt JMPD officers have been arrested today for demanding 20,000 rand bribe from a foreign national shop owner on the 2nd of January. The shop owner offered to make a fake ID for a member of the public who was then not happy and had complained to two of these corrupt officers. The two female metro officers then called two female officers and two male officers as backup. They closed the doors of the shop and demanded a 20,000 rand bribe. 
The shop owner allegedly paid the officers 5,000 rands before reporting the matter. He opened up a case with us here at Internal Affairs for investigation, and he then later stage went to SAPS as well and opened up a case as well at SAPS. So he's also a complainant at, at a SAPS case. So the matter is still being investigated by a SAPS. Police found no evidence that the shop owner has been producing fake IDs. Sitako says they'll arrest more JMPD officers believed to be involved in this corruption. Mobile Madlala, Johannesburg. Now, there's still no date for this year's national elections, though it's believed it's probably going to be sometime in May. Today, the Independent Electoral Commission launched its election logo and says it's all systems go for the polls. Zikona Chona has the details. Exe means democracy. Exe. The phrase the IEC hopes will get South Africans to the polls. Excel says that I'm young enough to be bold enough. Bold With enough a particular focus on attracting young people. The fact is South Africans below the age of 30 are underrepresented on the voters' roll. I'm no longer just a number in the crowd. People who are at the age of, below the age of 30 remain underrepresented. In this case, people who are age of 18 to 19 are currently sitting at 16%, and people who are at the age of 20 to 29 are sitting at about 54%. Uh, we say, XA, register, XA, we all must vote. Thank you. There is a final voter registration drive later this month, with the Commission saying it's pleased with the progress it's made in capturing addresses of voters. This on instruction of the country's highest court to have it done by the end of November. As we speak today, that figure stands at 21.5 million, representing 83% of the totality of the voters' roll. An election date is yet to be announced by the president, but the Independent Electoral Commission says it's all systems go on their end. Zikona Chona in Midrand. And proof of residence will no longer stop you from making your ex when you go to the polls. In a special sitting in Parliament, the National Council of Provinces adopted the Electoral Laws Amendment Bill today, which contains another key amendment. It's expressly forbidden for taxpayers' money to be used by political parties to campaign. Peladi Situsa has the story. Those who vote in favour, please raise your hands. And with that, the eyes have it, as 65 parliamentarians vote unanimously. This bill has been agreed to, and I wish to thank you. The Electoral Laws Amendment Bill allows voters whose addresses are not on the voters' roll, which is still being updated, to vote regardless. You can even still come to vote even if you don't have an address, but then provide an address during the voting process. It also ensures that no public funds are used to fund political party campaigns. The traditional and Khoisan leadership bill also got the green light. For the first time, it brings Khoisan leaders into the fold where governance is concerned. All that remains before any of these bills become law is President Cyril Ramaphosa's signature. Pilar Sutusa, Parliament. The city of Johannesburg is worried about the safety of staff and patients at local clinics. The Lanasia South Clinic has become the latest target in a string of robberies at clinics in the city. Our reporter Tsejo Hajo Moahi has the story. Just one of several health facilities robbed in the last few months. Well, since around July 2018, so in the current financial year, we've had about nine clinics targeted by um, criminal elements. Um, that's across the city in all the seven regions of the city. At this clinic, thieves got away with 10 computers, forcing community members to now walk three kilometers to another facility. Clinic is a for the community. And as a Ileona clinic, as a clinic, and it is so, it's about to go south from the flag fountain, hotel, and service, and especially clinic is Hahulu, it was Hahulu more mobile. 
we do have security at our clinic. We have been engaging to and fro with um, with JMPD to ensure that we've got adequate um, security measures at our clinic. But as you know, there's always going to be gaps and there's also the human element. Um, for instance, at, at Laneige South, we're told that when the armed response unit arrived, um, they were told that this is a false alarm and that everything is well. And as a result, they left without um, properly investigating the, the trigger. Police are still investigating the incident and have not made arrests in any of the robberies. Tseho Hajomoachi, Johannesburg. Still ahead on E News. A new dawn for the Democratic Republic of Congo, celebrating a new president, but there are still serious concerns. Shannon McLaughlin, the creator of the Ubuntu Baba baby carriers, has noted Woolworth's apology over what they call striking similarities between her baby carrier and theirs, but says that's not enough. The entrepreneur says she wants to see how they're going to change the way they do business. Woolworth's carriers have already been removed from the shelves. They are willing to um, have more conversations with me about how they can change um, the ethical side of um, the way they work with entrepreneurs because they're saying one thing all about good business journey and then when it comes down to it there's all these stories come on, coming out of the woodwork um, it's not just me there's a lot of other people that are speaking up um, of this type of behavior happening to them from other corporations um, Woolworths um, other corporations as well which obviously I won't mention but um, this is this is a repetitive behavior that needs to be you know someone needs to take responsibility for it Let's take a quick look at the markets now. President Cyril Ramaphosa has called on the Democratic Republic of Congo election officials to finalize the results with speed. This, he says, will ensure credibility of the polls and peace in the country. Now, the DRC's election authority has released provisional results of December's polls this morning only. They put opposition leader Felix Chisikedi as the winner of those polls, which marked the first democratic election in decades. Malungela Boy spoke to Congolese nationals living in South Africa. The celebrations on the streets of Kinshasa in the DRC. And here on the streets of Yeovil in Johannesburg, the Congolese nationals say the people have spoken. South Africa, it's finished for me. I must go back with my country. We are praying to God, to ask God to give us somebody, the one who is from Congo, the child of Congo, and then God, God answer us today. The real partner for South Africa has woken. The real giant of Africa has woken through this election. This is the richest country in the world that has now set itself on the trail for rebuilding, reconstruction, and be the real partner for South Africa around Africa. Felix Chisekedi, son of the late opposition leader Etienne Chisekedi, gained nearly 40% of the vote. Runner-up businessman Martin Fayulu has rejected the vote and called it an electoral coup. While Joseph Kabila's preferred candidate, former Interior Minister Emmanuel Ramazani Shadari, came third. While many are already celebrating, the results will only be made official next week. Malunge Lubui, Johannesburg. Moving further afield, and Lady Gaga is apologizing for collaborating with R. Kelly. She's vowing to never work with the R&B singer again. 
Of course, her comments come amid an increasing outcry over a documentary in which multiple women accuse Kelly of sexual misconduct. Now, Gaga recorded a duet with the R&B singer entitled Do What You Want With My Body in 2013. Now, she's posted on social media that she made that song during a dark time in her life. Gaga, a victim of sexual abuse, says she believes the woman in the documentary. The pop star is removing the song from all streaming services. UK Prime Minister Theresa May says she will outline her Brexit Plan B if she's defeated in Parliament. May will have three days to present the plan before it's debated in Parliament, but she says MPs will only be given 90 minutes to discuss the issue and only one amendment will be allowed. The vote on the exit plan is expected to take place next week. We'll go to our weather centre for your live weather report with Candice. Evening, Candice. And then Australia's same-sex penguins, oh yes, Sven and Magic, finally proud parents. <laughs> Let's get your weather as we edge closer to the weekend evening to you, Candice. We are having such dramatic weather up here in Johannesburg. Are there more wonderful thunderstorms in store? <laughs> Well, you actually, you've got quite a bit of thunderstorm activity right the way through to the weekend. I'm very jealous of all that thunderstorm activity and, of course, the beautiful lightning that comes with it. But on Friday, you'll also see that we have predominantly clear skies over South Africa's central interior. We'll see quite a bit of cloud over parts of the Eastern Cape and Kwazulu Natal. It's going to be a very windy day over parts of the interior. There's even a watch for gale force winds along the coast between Cape Point and Cape Agulhas ahead of, believe it or not, a cold front that will arrive. But here's that thunderstorm activity. It's mainly over the far eastern part of South Africa. And then we've got this cold front arriving in the Western Cape, bringing in cooler weather, windy conditions, as well as rainfall with it. The Northern Cape remains dry, though, with a predominantly sunny day on Friday. Highs head into the mid-30s for Uppington and Prisca, as well as Pastersburg. You'll see a slightly cooler day for the Western Cape, with rain mainly in the evening, 23 degrees for Cape Town, but still hot over the eastern parts, 35 for both West George at 28. Quite a bit of cloud with a warm day along the eastern Cape coastline, hot across the interior. Thunder showers are expected over the western and northern part of KwaZulu Natal, with a 60% chance of thunderstorms over parts of Mpumalanga, with maximum temperatures mainly in the low 30s. Hot with thunder showers as we head towards Limpopo, with a sissing hot afternoon for Mahi King at 38. Rustenburg and Harry Smith, both of the possibility of thunder showers, but of the dry forecast for the rest of the northwest as well as the Free State, a sunny and hot 35 degrees for Bloemfontein. Gauteng can expect another hot day. Pretoria 34, 31 for the rest of those weather stations with isolated thunder showers in the forecast. As we head towards the weekend, you'll see that rain extending from Fredadal through to George, as well as some rain along the east coast, but hot weather and thunderstorms continue in the northeast right the way through to Sunday, where we can expect a partly cloudy and warm day in the west. That's all from the Weather Centre. Enjoy the or night. Thank you so much, uh, Candice, there in Cape Town. And finally to Australia. And how about this for the rights of gay parents? Two papa penguins at Sydney's Sea Life Aquarium are very pleased with themselves. A chick entrusted to the bonded male pair in October has taken its first swim. The sub-Antarctic Gentoo chick was given to foster male parents, Magic and Sven, as an egg. They dutifully shared the job of hatching the egg and nurturing the chick. He's been named Svendrik after his dad. The gender of the now five kilogram baby will be determined soon. <laughs> So sweet. Let's uh, recap your top stories once more. On a day of protests and a visit from the Northwest MEC over a photograph that shows black and white pupils separated in class. But the school SGB says they have other pictures that prove the school is integrated. Three Joburg Metro cops arrested in front of their colleagues after a sting operation in the city. Exe, register. Exe. We all must vote. Thank you. Exe, indeed. Ahead of this year's national elections, the IEC unveils an innovative poll slogan. Exe. <laughs> From me and the team, it's a very good night.